We are trusting and believing God to do what only God can do. And he's going to bring us out of this. When we talk about God opening doors uh, and, and, and doing good thing, making ways out of no ways, uh, that's exactly what he does. We, we might feel as if we're standing at the Red Sea, but I remember a man called Moses that all he needed to do was stretch out what he already had in his hands. And I wish that I had some people who are willing to just stretch out your hands right now and worship God because you believing that God is going to bring us out of this. Uh, and I'm saying all of that because God is looking for our word for the month is witness. He's looking for someone that will be what they say they are, do what they say they will not just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. They'll, the world is in dire need of witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and, and they need to see us with uh, our heads held up, not with our heads held down. But if your head is down, be saying a prayer. Be calling on the name of the Lord. But when you lift your head up, walk with the confidence and the courage that God is going to make a way somehow. We don't have to worry about the somehow. We just have to hold fast to that the Lord will make a way. And I believe it. And I just want to encourage you on today to just continue to hold fast your faith. Work on you. Work on becoming the best you that you can be, that God might be able to get the glory out of your witness and that God may be able to get the glory out of your testimony. That's a beautiful word for the month, I believe, for the month of May, for, for an anniversary month that, that we're not just so big on the anniversary. We're still big on another year that God has kept us, that God is still getting the glory out of our lives. And we just want to make sure that we're doing things in the manner that will be pleasing unto him. Amen. Amen. Our word for the month is witness, witness, witness. Next Sunday, I know, is Mother's Day, and, and I'm praying to God that he would give some real direction as to how we might have a, uh, a beautiful service uh, and give more. And, and I'm working on that, and I'm praying on that, and I'm going to ask that you would continue to pray, pray that uh, whatever it is that God will allow uh, within the mandates of what's being uh, given to us, that we can do it and be in order. Obviously, we don't want to be a church out of order. We want to be a church in order because that's what our God is, a God of order. So I really want to give uh, opportunity for us to do uh, something really, really nice for Mother's Day. And uh, and you just keep me in prayer that we can make it happen. Amen. Amen. We want to uh, send our prayers out to the Chadwicks. I know they're experiencing some health issues. Brother Chadwick is in the hospital right now. And uh, Sister Chadwick, we're praying for both of you. And, uh, and we know that it's a trying time and we're continuing uh, to keep you lifted up as well as all of our families that have uh, uh, had loved ones that have transitioned on. We're keeping you lifted up as well in this terrible time where we're not able to be where we would desire to be with our family members. But we're trusting and believing that God is in his omnipresent state, that he is right there with them. And we're just just ask God to hug Brother Chad just a little bit hard, a little squeeze him a little tighter. And I'm asking that for all of you, that when you're feeling some kind of way, that the God of our salvation, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit will give us a peace that surpasses understanding. I believe he can. I believe he will. We just have to hold fast our profession of our faith. We have to believe that that's what's going to happen. Amen and amen. As you can see, we are going to have our communion today. So whatever you have at home that you can pray over, and use as your sacrament for today at the end, uh, nearing the end of this worship experience. I want you to be able to do that with us here at the church. Uh, we're gonna believe and we're giving you time now that as we uh, endeavor to move forward in this worship experience, that we will also uh, be able to at the end uh, have our communion service where you might be able to remember what the Lord has done for each and every one of us. Amen, amen and amen. We have another song and uh, and we're going to get ready for the word of God. The word of God is going to be coming out of the book of Luke, Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 19. Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 19. And then we're going to jump down to verse 30 and 32 or 30 through 32. Let me say that one more time. Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 19. And then we're going to jump down to verses 30 to 32. Be blessed. And I'll be back in a moment after this next song. God bless.
somebody praise he's the risen king and he did it just for you and just for me death couldn't hold him down that'll that'll make you shout right there <laughs> that'll make you want to give god glory because jesus got up because he saw the need that you had and he saw the need that i had i'm so so grateful we serve a risen king Risen King. Our text today is Luke, uh, the 24th chapter, and we'll be beginning at verse 13 and reading through to verse 19. And we're going to pick up after that at verse 30, and we'll read through to verse 32. 
Amen, amen, and amen. And it reads, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs, about seven miles. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Verse 16 reads, but their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them whose name was Cleophas, answered said unto him art thou only a stranger in jerusalem and hast not known the things which are come to pass thee there in these days and he said unto them what things and they said unto him concerning jesus of nazareth which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before god and all the people let us drop down to verse 30. And it reads, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. Verse 31, and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Verse 32, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's once again the moment that you have facilitated for preaching. I pray, oh God, that the minds and the hearts of your people are open to receive your word. Change their heart and hearts to hearts of flesh that the word might go forward, the seeds might go forward to find the good ground to grow and mature to be what you desire it to be. And in preparation of me, I ask that you would allow my eyes to be your eyes, my ears to be your ears, and my mouth so much so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are found to be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, you and you alone are my strength and my redeemer. Let the people of God who love God say amen. Say amen again and one more time for the precious Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I want to reason with you this morning from this simple thought, just a little walk with Jesus. Just a little walk with Jesus. Many of us have been hoping for better in these past few weeks. And for the sake of our hearts, we're continuing to hope. But it just seems that the more that we listen to the news and we listen to all of the different media outlets that uh, hope could very easily begin diminishing because we're beginning to hear more bad news than we're hearing of good news. We're hearing more about the death toll than we are those that are overcoming. Ah, but I wish I had somebody today that had an understanding that when you're walking with the Lord, he can facilitate deeper understanding and better understanding of how we are to go about approaching this life. So I want to encourage you today to take it a step further than just hoping. Go ahead and say, I know it's going to get better. You see, when you make the declaration, then you walk as if you already believe it and possess it. See, I understand about hope and all of that. I understand that my, my, my hope is built. I understand that. But sometimes you got to make a, a, a clear effort to say, I know the Lord is going to bring us out of this. I know that God knows everywhere we are and what we're dealing with. And I know that he's going to not let anything happen to the kingdom of God. And even if he allows it, he's going to bring us home to where everything is going to be better. I hear in the book of Revelation said that's a place where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. Because, you know, I've seen churches that have lost their hope. I've seen 
people in the in, in, in the ministry that have lost their praise. I, I've seen preachers who have lost their hope. I've seen elders, deacons, uh, or Sunday school teachers, and just plain old good Christians who have lost their hope and their understanding of things are going to get better. And when you lose your hope, you become devastated. You become frustrated. You become so, so out of, of, of touch that discombobulation is what your middle name becomes. But I just want you to take a moment and say, this is not going to last for much longer because God has a way of bringing you to a place of higher understanding where you know something is going to get better. I wish I had a witness. There was nothing left but a shell of a Christian when you, when you start acting as if God can't make a way somehow. You just have a form of godliness, but you lack the power, lack the power to overcome it. But I need some people who understand what a, re a real witness does. A real witness says what he saw. A real witness talks about what he knows. A real witness talks about this is what it is. Good God Almighty. I wish I had somebody who understands that God is who he says he is. Jesus is who he says he is. And if you take just a little walk with him, every now and then things are going to get better. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why it's important. It's important in these particular days and times that we take a little walk with Jesus. Huh? And this is our story today, the story that sums up the nature and purpose of our calling as we endeavor to go through this life as preachers, as teachers, as, as lay people in the church, we're needing to tell somebody about the Lord. But, but the problem comes is how we position ourselves, how we understand things are. What are you talking about? I, I, I want you to think about it. These are just two disciples. Uh, didn't give their names. They said just two disciples. Uh, they, they, they are exhausted. They, they, they have been uh, uh, they've seen what has just happened to who they thought in their mind was the Messiah. They're discouraged and they're heading back home, uh, uh, walking seven miles to their house. And, I, and I'm so glad that, that they took the time to just walk on back home. But they're discussing the events that has occurred. We don't know why they have uh, 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 forsaken the company of the other disciples. We don't know why they left them there, but, but I would venture to say that at some point in time, they lost their hope. They lost their praise. Perhaps that was all they could do. Perhaps it was all the strength that they had left. Can I have, do I have anybody that's, that were willing to be honest? Sometimes life can hit you, hit you so hard that the praise you did have, you don't have the strength to really do it again. I, I wish I had somebody who understands that, that life can hit you so hard and so quickly that it knocks your wind out of you, that the, the, the last thank you, Jesus, is the only one that you, that you had. Your praise God is, is, is not so easy to come out because life has hit you that hard. And I think that's where we are with these two disciples heading back to their city. Life has hit them hard. And, and, and here's a beautiful thought. But Jesus met them, hallelujah, somebody, on the way. Uh -huh. He didn't come to Jerusalem to meet them. He didn't wait for them at their home. He didn't bid them to do some kind of holy pilgrimage to go somewhere and do this so that you can be recognized by God Almighty. Rather, he just meets them, listen to me, right where they are. He met them on a road amid their journey back home, right smack in the middle of their frustration, right smack in the middle of their uh, uh, of their discombobulation. God, met, Jesus met them right there in the pathway of them saying, what in the world have we been doing? How is it that it's possible for us to have thought that was a Messiah and it wasn't his other uh, Messiah because it doesn't look like a Messiah would get himself hung up on a cross. It doesn't look like a Messiah would have himself put in a borrowed tomb. It doesn't look like, I wish I had somebody that understand. Sometimes it don't look like what it is. Mm. Jesus met him. And even though they don't recognize him, he recognized them. Well, I'm gonna say that again for somebody. Even though they didn't recognize him, he recognized them as being his disciples. Somebody ought to be grateful about that today. You ought to be grateful that God knows you 
and has sent you and I a savior that recognizes us. And, and, and wouldn't it be wonderful to know that somewhere along the way in our life, the Lord showed up, huh? point number one, huh? the Lord will show up. Huh? Let's listen to this text again. It says in verse 13, and behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And as I said, that's about seven miles. They were walking back. Oh, they didn't have a subway. They, they couldn't call an Uber. Uh, they didn't have a lift back then. They, all, they, they obviously they didn't have a horse or a donkey, but they had two good feet uh, with two good pairs of legs, and they were walking back home. But, but as they were walking and talking, Jesus drew near to them. Ain't that good news? <laughs> when you're just going through life, doing the things that you're doing, uh, uh, the, Jesus, the Jesus that is your Savior decides to take a little walk with you. It's good to take a little walk with Jesus, somebody. See, the disciples were in the midst, as I said, of a tremendous loss. They had lost their hope. They had lost their dreams. They had lost their promise. They had even lost a body. Come on, somebody. Feel me on this now. They, 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 they lost their hope. They lost their dreams. They lost their promise. And they even can't even find Jesus' body. So, so they really are in some kind of predicament on how to deal with these things. But I came to let somebody know that even if that's you in a situation that you're in, point number one, the Lord will show up on your behalf. In the midst of your discouragement and fear, the Lord wanted me to let somebody know that he's going to show up on your behalf. Right in the midst of your wailing, in the midst of your midnight hour, in the midst of you turning your joy into uh, your sorrow into joy. He said, I'm going to show up. Uh, the spirit of the living God will show up right there in your bedroom. He, your spirit of the living God will show up right there in your living room. Uh, the spirit of the living God will show up when you're feeling like there's nobody else around you. He'll come and put his arms around you to let you know that you're not alone. I'm coming to let somebody know the Lord will show up on your behalf. you got to give him time to show up and meet you at your point of need. We don't know when they had started walking on this road, but somewhere along that journey, Jesus said, I'm going to meet you before you get to where you're going, because I just want to have a little talk with you as we walk this way. Good God Almighty. The Lord will show up on your behalf. He, he, he knows you. Uh, somebody said he hear your faintest cry and answer by and by. See, some of us want him to come when we want him, but 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 I wish I had somebody say, God shows up when he feels it's necessary to show up, and he's never late. Yes. He's never late to come to meet you and I at our point of need. And, and, and what I love about the text is, it says in verse 16, but their eyes were holding that they should not know it. God made it so that their eyes couldn't recognize their savior so that they could go ahead and talk freely. See, see, when you get in the church house, in the building, we like to pretend, we like to masquerade, we like to put on some clean clothes, but you got a dirty body. Good God almighty. But I wish I had somebody who understands that God said, I can meet you on your road of getting better. I can meet you as you go down the dusty places of your life. I'll meet you when you feel like sitting down. I'll come and grab your hand and say, get up. Take up your bed and walk. Somebody needs to say thank you because that's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of Savior that we have. And the Spirit will guide us into all truths. Point number one, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord will show up. Yes, he will. And he goes on to say that because he closed their eyes, they were free to continue to talk in the manner that they were talking to one another. Y'all know how we do sometimes with our friends and our family. Our, our conversations are a little bit different. You know, when, when you're with somebody who knows you, huh, you, can, you can talk like you feel it. Huh. You don't have to make all your eyes dotted huh, and you don't have to have all your T's crossed. See, sometimes, even though I'm an educated individual, huh, but I got a hood in me. Come on here, somebody. Every now and then, I don't want to try to use all my long letter words. Uh, sometimes I want to use just the word that the hood for. Yeah, I, mean, I know what I mean. You hear me? Uh-huh. You know what I'm talking about. I, I holler back at you, boy. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. 
understand that every now and then you want to break it down to the least lowest common denominator and just be who you are. I'm just not pastor. This not this. This not this is just Chip. And Chip sometimes can get with his family. Chip can sometimes get with his friends, and they can just talk like they want to talk. And I believe that's what these two disciples were doing. Going, through. they were talking. And Jesus said, "Well, guess what? I'm from the hood too. Place called Nazareth, uh huh. And I want to walk with you and have a little." Talk with you. <laughs> Point number two, tell the Lord all about it. He no, he no longer calls a servant. He calls us friend. Oh, I wish I had somebody that understand. You, you, you can holler at Jesus. Jesus understands where you came from. <laughs> Jesus was a part of your hood before you were a part of the hood. <laughs> Jesus was born in a manger. At least you had a bed. Oh, good God Almighty, y'all better hear me. Jesus understands where you're coming from. So learn how to be real with him. Point number two, tell the Lord all about it. Let's look at the text. It says, verse 17. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answered, said unto him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days. Obviously, Jesus being omniscient, that he is all knowing, he knows very well what's going on and he doesn't even have to be omniscient to know because it was him, good God. Uh, he, he, he just wants to understand their perspective. You see, see, if he had come up as Jesus, they wouldn't be able to let him know exactly where they were in their relationship with Jesus because they would be too busy trying to impress Jesus. Oh, I wish I had somebody who understands where I'm coming from. See, when you learn how to be real with God, God can be real with you. When you put your stuff out there and let him know what he needs to fix in your life and stop pretending this and, and pretending that, then he can fix you right where he found you. Good God Almighty. See, that's the, our problem. See, we want to act like we're this so we, we never get better. And that's what Jesus is trying to do. Jesus was allowing them to go and get it off your chest. Do I have some people out there that's listening to me this morning that understands every now and then you can become so frustrated. Huh? Come on, that you just want to get it off your chest. Huh? You just want to let people know I'm not this and I'm not that. Every now and then I feel some kind of way about things. But good God Almighty, the Lord God said, I'm seeking such that would worship me in spirit and in truth, they will be honest about who they are so I can change what's crooked in your life. I'll make your jagged edges smooth and your crooked places straight. I wish I had somebody who understand. Listen, to your old way of thinking, listen to me, your old way of thinking can keep you from getting to the new place Jesus wants you to go. Mm. i say it to you one more time. Your old way of thinking can keep you from getting to the new place Jesus wants you to go. Sometimes, 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 in order to move forward, you must lay down your heavy load. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes when you want to move forward, you got to realize all that baggage is not necessary. <laughs> You're not going no place for a long time, period of time, and you got 20 pieces of luggage. <laughs> That's too much baggage to carry for, for a short time. <laughs> who am I talking to? <laughs> you know who you are. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But there are some things that's in your past. There's some things in your past that it's time to, to lay it down so that you can move forward. There's some things in your history that you need to get rid of and move forward. But 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 as I said in point number two, you need to go ahead and tell the Lord all about it. Go ahead and let him free you of where your problems are. Let him free you of your baggage. He's a heavy load carer and a heavy burden bearer. He can carry the weight on his shoulders because he's already carried the weight of the world. So he doesn't mind you telling him about your issues. And guess what? He's not confused when there's a plethora of things coming at him from different people. He's not confused by who that person was and who that prayer came from. He knows in his omniscience, in his all-knowing self, just who to fix, who to touch, and when to do it. Somebody needs to understand that you cannot go forward when you got all this baggage. Sometimes you got to lay your burdens down. You got to let the words go. In other words, you got to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your problems. Songwriter say, He'll hear 
your faintest cry, and he'll answer by and by. And see what he what, what Jesus said, he said, he said, Well, what things are you really talking about? Or what things is it that you having problems with processing uh, in your life? Or what things have you seen in these past few days? See, now he's trying to break it down because he could have really gotten real deep on them. But he said, no, now is not the time for me to get deep with you because I want you to go ahead and confess. <laughs> I want you to come on and, and, and be real with me. That's, that's the only reason why I'm walking this dusty road with you. Somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you for, for, for not thinking of yourself to be too high to walk on a dusty road with me. <laughs> I thank God that one day he walked on a dusty road with this old boy and he gave opportunity for me to know I don't have to be that way for long. If I turn my life over to him, I wish I had somebody that's got that same kind of testimony that if you turn your life over to him, he'll make it better. Not in your season, but in due season, he'll make it better. He said, if you faint not, hallelujah, in well-doing, in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. You got to learn how to hold on and hold out. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. What things? Because see, these disciples, the, the disciples, they didn't even call him Messiah as they were calling him that prior to his death. They changed their perspective on him because of what they saw. See, sometimes your natural eyes are messed up your spiritual imagination. Sometimes you'll, you, you, you'll, you'll see too much and you'll stop believing based on what your lying eyes showed you. They called him, he's a prophet. See, they didn't now call him the Messiah because his death led them to doubt. And here we are in the middle of death all around us. And people are questioning whether God is God, but believe that the devil is the devil. Well, the devil is a liar. He's a deceiver. And the truth ain't in him. I trust and believe in an almighty God who can make ways out of no way, can do exactly what we, you and I, need him to do. He said, they said he's a distinguished prophet. They, they couldn't deny that he had done some miraculous things, but, but he wasn't a prophet. He was the Messiah, and he did things that only God could do. He made the dead to, to, to rise out of the, out of the uh, uh, tomb. Lazarus never told his story, but I believe he had one. The man that was lame at the gate called Beautiful, he got up and walked because of somebody else's faith. I tell you, uh, uh, Paul and Silas was in a jail cell at the midnight hour singing, uh, and before the day came, uh, the daylight came, uh, the chains and all of the feathers and the jail cells opened up and they fell off. Come on, somebody. But they said, we still here. We didn't go nowhere, but we know what prayer can do. Uh, we know what a song at midnight can do. If we know what a little talk with the Lord can do. I wish I had somebody who understands just a little talk makes all the difference in your life. Have a little talk with him and let him know your concerns because he can change the direction of your faith. Now, Jesus is listening to all of this and they're still walking. And as I said, he's walking seven miles with these two disciples of his. And he's listening to them articulate the best way they can to a stranger what they're experiencing. I don't, I don't owe no stranger nothing other than just conversation. And so they're really probably just pointed out, giving him everything that he asked for. Or maybe they're giving him more than what he asked for. But still... He allowed them to continue on. Uh, can you imagine how long the conversation had to have been for them to have said everything they needed to say and get to their home? And now uh, 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 Jesus is being asked, don't, don't go. Stay with us. Stay with us. But let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Verse 30 says, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. He took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Point number three, the Lord will open your eyes. The Lord will open your eyes. Before I go there, I want to go right to verse uh, uh, 25. Because after all of this conversation that these disciples have had, listen, listen, Jesus is saying to them, now listen to me, I'm about to, to mess up your theology. I'm gonna help you be where you should have been 
based on what you've already seen. You know, we've been talking about what you know matters. Hope matters. All right, all right, all right, that's good. But it's also what matters is what you've already experienced with the goodness of the Lord. Come on, in verse 25 says, and he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter his glory? See, what happens now is, now that I've heard your situation, Jesus is saying, now that I've heard your take, I've heard you complaining about what I look like. Come on, come on, come on. I've heard you complain about what you thought should have happened to me. But didn't you read the scriptures? Don't you know what Moses said? Don't you know about the prophet Isaiah? If you are a disciple of mine, I know for a fact that information is in your psyche. I know that information is already in your mind. But you failed to use that because of what your eyes were able to see. But if you would reflect back, good God Almighty, if you would reflect back on the word that was given to you aforetime, now you would know how to apply it in due time. You would now know how to see me on the cross and know that I had to do it. You would see me bleeding on the cross and know that I had to do it. You would see me getting a, a, a spat on and know that it had to happen. You would see me in the garden asking God to let this cup pass me, but you'll know that it had to happen. You saw me lower my head and die and say it's finished, but it had to happen. See, it's too many things that we have to understand that had to happen, and when we understand it, it had to happen, then you have to give him praise because he followed through all the way. Mm. He followed through all the way. Too many times Christians forget that the Bible is the tool that God has given us for encouragement. The Bible is the tool that's been given us to keep us with the right frame of mind as we go through hell on earth. But we're going to go through happiness in heaven because everything that happens in heaven is going to be happy. Somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you. But while we're going through, why are we going through? You got to know the Lord is going to open your eyes. If you stay in the word, he will give you exactly what you need. That's why Romans 15 and 4 says, for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement meant of the scriptures, we might have hope. Romans 15 and 4, y'all, for whatever was written in former days, was written for our instruction that through endurance, going through it, and through the encouragement of the scriptures, the support of the word of God, we might have hope. It was only after, listen, after they had walked, Jesus was calling them foolish because you're not applying the knowledge that you have. You're not applying the hope that you have. You want to have a little walk with Jesus, but I want to have a little talk with Jesus. And then when you walk with him and you talk with him, he'll tell you you're his own. And, and, and as you tarry there in the garden with him, he'll make you understand some things that you never thought you could possibly understand. That's why it's so good that when you get the pure word, don't deny it. No matter where the word comes from, no matter who's delivering the word. Let the word find you right where you are. Let it answer all of the things that you, with, through prayer and supplication, make your petitions known. Talk to Jesus about the situations. Talk to Jesus about the troubles that you're having. Let him help you right where you are. See, now you use your little walk with Jesus because now Jesus said, you know what? I'm going to sit down with you because you want me to stay at your house and, and have bread with you. Because you, you, you're feeling something in your soul. Huh? You're feeling something in your spirit. Huh? And, and what it says here in the text, huh? it says that Jesus broke the bread huh? as it was at the Last Supper. And when he broke the bread after giving him them this pure word, huh? their eyes opened and he disappeared. Huh? Somebody need to hear where I'm coming from on this. Huh? Uh -huh. He don't have to stay in your life. He just leaves the word in your life. <laughs> He's always going to be a part of your life because he is your savior, but you don't have to see him visibly. Uh, you, you, have you ever wondered, have you ever been in his presence and he blinded your eyes? Have, have you ever thought about it? You might have walked with Jesus and talked with him and you just didn't know that was him. But now he said, now use your little walk with me 
disciples to have a little talk with somebody else. Now that you know me, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you can ask what you will of the Father and he'll give it to you. See, you need to tell somebody what you know. Anybody can tell what they heard. I wish I had somebody that's really wanting to be a witness to tell somebody what you know. See, you need to ask the Lord to open up your eyes that you might be able to see the glimpse of truth. You might tell God to open up your ears that I might hear the voices of truth. I open up my mouth that I might be able to bear witness to the truth. And then open up my heart that I might be able to receive the truth. Somebody needs to know that just a little walk with Jesus can make all the difference in your life. There needs to be somebody out there right now saying, Lord, walk with me. Walk with me as I pilgrim through this land. Walk with me and talk with me. Help me to understand. Take your time and explain to me what I need to know about how to live right, how to talk right, how to get right. Because I know one of these days you're going to crack the sky and I might not be in the right place if I don't get right right now. Somebody's talking about I'll wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to you. You need to do what you need to do today to get right, church. So when God comes for, when God sends Jesus to come get us, we can say, let's get church and go home. Let's get right, church, and go back home. I don't want to hear somebody say, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that's going to be. See, the problem is everybody that's proclaiming ain't going. It's going to be when y'all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing. But I don't want to be the one that busts your bubble. I want to be the one that encourages you and say, talk to Jesus sometime. Tell him all about your trouble. Make him understand that I don't feel like I'm supposed to feel. I'm not feeling this thing that's going on right now. God, I need help. I need mercy. I need grace. I need your, 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 your loving arms around me because it don't feel too good right now. What my eyes are telling me, my spirit is not even strong enough to handle. But if we can bear the infirmities of the, of the weak, you that are strong, we can help somebody make it along this way, this pilgrim journey. We can help somebody along the way. We can do it. I believe we can do it. Many of us are on that Emmaus road. Many of us are on that two-part road, the road of confession and the road of increased faith. You're on that road, and you need to do what you need to do while you're on that road. That road can make a difference in your life. If you're honest with yourself, you may be walking with Jesus right now. Amen. He might be sitting in the room with you right now, waiting on you to go ahead and confess so that he can start working with you as you walk that seven mile road. Seven is the number of completion. Jesus said, when I get you to the end of the road, if you walk with me the whole way, <laughs> You don't have to worry what happens at the end of the road. At the end of the road, when your life is over down here, when you have gotten to the completion of your time down here, if you fulfilled your commitment to walk and talk with the Lord, there is a well done, thy good and faithful servant, waiting for you at the gates of that great city. There ought to be some people that are grateful for the word this morning that says uh, just a little walk with the Lord uh, can make a difference in your life. Uh, just a little talk with the Lord uh, can make an amazing difference in your life because when you got the walk and the talk, uh, then you got the testimony to support it. Uh, only you know what God can do in your life. Uh, only you know how the Lord, Lord can make a way in your life. Uh, when I think uh, of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that he's done for me, uh, my soul cries out, how Hallelujah. And even if my mouth don't open up, I'm so glad that the voice of my soul can cry out hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 He'll make a difference. He'll make a difference. I want you to get the points. Point number one, the Lord will show up. Point number two. You got to tell the Lord all about it, seriously and for real. Point number three, the Lord will open your eyes. When you're honest about who you are, he'll show you who he is. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are open. We want to give opportunity to whomever may be under the sound of my voice to take it upon yourself 
to say now before God, Jesus, and the heavenly host that I'm not doing everything right. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you have to be perfect, but you at least need to be on that road of enlightenment, the road where you won't just get it off your chest. Let the Lord know that I'm a sinner. And even if you've been saved, I'm a sinner saved by grace. But if you don't know the Lord from the pardon of your sin, we want to give you an opportunity now to make Jesus your choice. Go ahead and confess that he is the son of God. He died on a cross, but was raised from the dead. He's sitting on the right hand of the father right now. And he's talking for you as well as for me. And if you can believe that that is true, then I believe that if with all your heart you say that, that you are part of this great kingdom called Christianity. Christ follows people who are trying to be to the best of our ability, Christ-like. I believe if you said that, the Lord has begun to walk with you down this road called life. And as you're walking with the Lord, keep talking, but also listen for his voice. Because he says his sheep knows his voice and no other will they follow. I'm praying for you that you would receive this word as an encouraging word for you. That the Lord knows how troubling times are right now. That's why God sent him to us so that he would have an understanding of what it's like to walk through this kind of life with all kinds of temptations, toils, and snares. But yet he left this world without him ever sinning, but only taking our sins with him. There ought to be grateful people this morning that are truly grateful that as we draw close to God, he draws close to us. Amen. We're going to prepare now for our communion service. And I want you to be aware that even in the message, there was communion. And it was at the communion, after receiving the word of God from Jesus, that Jesus broke the bread, hallelujah, and the disciples' eyes were opened. My prayer this morning, this afternoon, is that after the word has now been placed in your spirit, that as we begin to drink of the cup and or break the bread and drink of the cup, that realness of who God is becomes manifested in your life. And as that manifests in your life, you become the witness that God desires you to be in regards to his only begotten son. Amen and amen, yes. So I pray now that you will gather your sacrament. Whatever it is that you feel is suitable for you to utilize as you remember the life, death, the suffering, but more importantly for you and me, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because as the disciples said, did our hearts not burn as the word was spoken to us? The text continues on that they ran back and told the other disciples, Jesus is alive. Because they knew it now in their spirit. So Father, in the name of Jesus, as we prepare to partake of this bread and drink of this cup, we do acknowledge, O oh Lord, that it's only by your blood that we are redeemed to such a degree that we're able to partake of this Holy Communion. We're so grateful that you stayed on the cross, that you gave us a fighting chance, hallelujah, to be in right position for you. We're gonna live like we love you. We're gonna live and we're going to honor you. 
So I pray now that you would change these from the common to the spiritual. That it might have an everlasting presence in our life as we await the day of your return. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. On the night that our Savior was betrayed, he took the bread, broke it, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat the olive. And after the same manner, after he had given thanks, he said, this is the cup of the New Testament. My blood which is shed for you. This you do in remembrance of me. Take and drink ye all. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Scripture declares that the disciples have parted that place, singing a hymn. But we want to leave this place today at the altar, at the altar of sacrifice, where we lay our burdens down. Imagine in your mind that you're walking to the altar and you have your baggage with you. You have your issues with you, your anger, your frustration, your confusion, whatever it is, the altar is where you want to lay it down. And when you lay it down, walk away in confidence in knowing that the Lord is going to make a way for you in his divine time. So as you're walking to the altar, thank him as you get there. Thank him in advance for what he's already doing on your behalf. Tell him he doesn't have to talk to you about it. Just bring you out when he feels it's time. That's why we surrender. We surrender to his will and we surrender to his way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we surrender our burdens to you. We surrender our cares and we cast them on you now. We know you care for us because you woke us up this morning. We weren't so special that we deserved it, but we were so loved. And we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your grace. Continue to bless us and use us for your glory. God, as we climb up mountains, give us the strength to climb. As we find ourselves sometimes in the valley, give us the ability to go through. But whatever it is that you need for us to do, we yield that to you now. And we say to you humbly, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Touch those that are in the sick, that are sick, God. Touch those of us that are shut in. Touch those that are in despair, that are suffering from all kinds of anxiety. God, whatever the situation or circumstance, we have laid it at your altar because we can't do anything with it, but we know that you can. And so we thank you now in advance for how you're going to work it out. I say to you now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with each of you until we shall come together again, whether it be here on earth or in that great city called heaven. We say to you and to you only, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Let the redeemed of the Lord who loves the Lord say amen, amen, amen. and amen. Go in peace, God. Love you.